that the ministers have given incorrect information to Parliament and they've chosen not to correct it straight away. Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, are these just amazing scenes within the House of Commons that happened on Monday afternoon? Oh, after our leaky Suella Blabamofa decided that now we can move on from the problem of dinghy spotting, you know, the problems that they've caused themselves, they have now decided to, after 13 years of power, to attack the poor even more by basically with antisocial behaviour rules. And why not? Because, let's be honest, none of this stuff ever happens within the four walls of those who have all the gold they can eat. Well, after a drivel, the Labour MP for Aberfan, Stephen Kinnock, asked for a point of order with facts as well. And as you can see, Yvette Cooper didn't take it lying down either. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. On the 13th of December, in response to a question from my honourable friend, the member for the Wirral South, regarding the size of the current asylum backlog, the Prime Minister stood at that dispatch box and claimed wrongly that the backlog is half the size that it was when Labour was in office. Six days later, the Immigration Minister went even further from the same dispatch box, claiming that the backlog of cases was 450,000 when the last Labour government handed over to us. Other members opposite have repeated these claims. I suspected that these claims were highly questionable, so on the 19th of December I wrote to the UK Statistics Authority requesting clarification. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm pleased to inform the House that the Chief Executive of the Statistics Authority responded to my request on Thursday, and his letter to me is crystal clear. The asylum backlog when Labour left office in 2010 was not in the hundreds of thousands, it was 18,954. Now, under the Conservatives, it is now 166,261, more than eight times larger than it was in 2010. Madam Deputy Speaker, the UK Statistics Authority is using the Home Office's own statistics, so it is somewhat odd that the Ministers didn't know they'd been playing fast and loose with the facts. I would therefore be grateful for your advice, Madam Deputy Speaker, on how you feel that ministers should go about apologising to our constituents and to correct the record at the earliest possible opportunity in compliance with their obligations under paragraph 1.3c of the Ministerial Code. Thank you. Very good, wasn't it? Well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving me uh, notice of his intention to raise this point of order. He is aware that the contents of Ministers' contributions in the House is not a matter for the Chair. He's also quite right to say that the Ministerial Code requires Ministers to correct any inadvertent errors in answers to parliamentary questions at the earliest opportunity. Um, as it happens, um, he does have um, ministers here um, from the Home Office who I'm sure um, will have heard excuse, excuse me, I, okay, um, who will have heard what he has to say and I'm sure if they feel there is anything that needs correcting they would do that at the earliest opportunity. Um, uh, in addition, if the honourable gentleman feels that there, uh, the, the, there are any further issues that he wishes to raise, I'm sure the table office will advise him on how he can pursue this matter further. And I think we will leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, further to that point of order, uh, Yvette Cooper. Point of order. This should be interesting. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, given that two of the relevant ministers were actually sitting in the chamber at the time, has she ever heard of a situation where it's abundantly clear with the evidence from the UK Statistics Authority that the ministers have given incorrect information to Parliament and they've chosen not to correct it straight away? Uh, well, I thank the Right Honourable Lady um, for that point of order. There is no obligation on ministers who are in the chamber to respond they may need they may wish to uh, could we have a bit of quiet please um, they may they may wish to look at what has been said and come back but that is up to them as i've said 
Um, it, it's clear what's in the ministerial code, um, and I am sure, as I say, that the points have been heard. And I suggest that we now move on. Yeah, but if you're one of them people who call our Spaffer Johnson an outright liar, you are dragged out by the scruff of your neck for being a disgrace to your country. So basically, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, misled Parliament when asked a question by Alison McGovern. A few other Tory MPs have punted the same lie. And if I'm honest, I'm not surprised Yvette Cooper got up and asked about correcting the record. Both just sat there, didn't they? She's still dreaming about Rwanda, probably. But the thing is, we all remember the time when they clutched their pearls with uh, Jeremy Corbyn. You remember the stupid people, stupid woman line that he either said or he didn't say? You, you saw them going absolutely mental. For my personal thought, I thought he said stupid people, but even then I could be wrong. We also remember when Keir Starmer got something wrong. They were all clutching the pearls, demanded to be dragged back by his ankles, kicking and screaming, forced at gunpoint to correct the record. The thing is, I hear a lot of times, and it really does great me when people say, all politicians are the same, and they're not. I even remember a couple of weeks ago, Lib Dem leader Ed Davy, he asked a question at PMQs about a constituent who passed away while waiting for an ambulance. He realised he got some of the information wrong, and I think it was about a week later when he found out. And the earliest opportunity, he made a point of order to correct the record, and that's the way it should be, shouldn't it? Now, not to tell a lie, or for political point scoring and carping from the sidelines, eh? and we wonder who... Uh, have said them slogans recently. Not mention any names. Leaky so. Anyway, I shall leave the video here until the next time. I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.